welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Alex, how you doing? All right, doing great, doing great, man. How you doing? Man, I'm always wonderful because we get to watch. I get to have another excuse to watch the same movies I will be watching anyway. And then I got somebody to talk to him about rather than <laughs> argue with my wife about how corny these movies are. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> so, yeah, I actually, I really enjoy doing this, honestly. <laughs> um, Same here, man. Same here. Today, we have uh, what is one of my personal favorite movies. And to me, is like the prototype, gold standard, end-all, be-all 80s action movies. It wasn't the first, obviously, because it came out in 1985. Definitely wasn't the last. But it's like it perfected that formula. And today we're talking about Looking at the thumbnail, you already know we're talking about Commando from 1985. Commando. 1985, man. 1985. And, and this this isn't the first time we talked about 85. We did Last Dragon, you know, a few videos ago. 85 was like a prime moment, prime time when it came to these action movies because it's like the 70s action movies are a little bit different from the 80s action movies. And, right. you know, 80s came around and you're starting to get these stories of like ex-Vietnam uh, commandos and whatnot. And they, they're integrated into whatever action movie, some way or another. Rambo, you know, Rambo kind of did that. And then Rambo uh, First Blood Part 2, which came out the same year, 1985. Yep, 85. Yep. Hey, this old, this this, this soldier, he's, he's a veteran. He's super super soldier one man army you combine that with the the talent the charisma and the the physical presence of Arnold Schwarzenegger absolutely coming off of Conan and Conan the Destroyer and uh Terminator the year before right as this indestructible machine killer machine you get this. You get this movie. This gem, this blessing from the gods is this movie because <laughs> it's yep. It is. It's cheesy in every way that an eighties action movie should be. It's got action, ridiculous action, like an action movie should have. Right. And it's got a simple, paper thin plot that you really don't even give a shit about while you're watching this movie. Yeah. Because it's. Good guy, daughter gets kidnapped. I find the people that kidnapped her, kill them. End of movie. End of movie. Credits. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So I just yeah, I just want to give that intro. Uh, we, you know, we're going to talk about more of this, but uh, let's talk about some of the other actors that are in this movie before we actually kind of get to the movie and Absolutely. some of the production behind it. To start out with, this movie is directed by uh, Mark Lester. Who Mark Lester. Yeah. Coincidentally, also did Firestarter. Yeah, he did Firestarter, Class of 99, 1999, Showdown in Little Tokyo. So, you know, he's done some some decent action films and uh, genre-type movies. Steven D'Souza is the writer for this movie, and he's done quite a bit, too. You know, I don't want to go down too many rabbit holes with the people in this movie. Uh, right. We have Radon Chong daughter of Tommy Chong from Cheech and Chong fame. And Absolutely. at the time in the eighties, you know, if you were light skinned, pretty black woman, you know, you, you could, you could kind of get a role in the movie. There weren't a whole lot of these roles, especially as she was the, she was the female lead in this movie. Yes, yeah, she was. And the way it was originally, the way it was originally written, she was supposed to have like a romantic thing with uh, Arnold. Mm. Supposed, it was supposed to happen on the plane on the way to the island later in the movie, but they cut that, and that actually makes a lot more sense, honestly, because it would have been right. stupid if they had some kind of romantic love scene on a plane. Yeah, where he's trying but she's to supposed rescue to be his daughter. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, to be that, that would have been, been great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's a big role for her because that same year she did Color Purple. She was squeaking uh, Color Purple. So absolutely, you know, big role for her. Uh, feel like you know she did a pretty good job in the movie she's not too annoying you know she's she's not really in the way you know, no, she's, she's she really natural she's really natural yeah she saves arnold at one point you know she's got the rocket launcher point in the wrong direction and 
She saves his life. Uh, oh, yeah. You, one quick note on that scene: if you if you really look, you being in the military, you know that you know every military weapon has dummy proof instructions. Right. All right. If you pay attention in the scene where he breaks into the army surplus store and steals all those weapons, when she's taking them out of the store on that cart, that rocket launcher is sitting on top of the cart. And the instruction book is laying on it in front of you. Right. <laughs> and it's one of those things you won't pay attention to at all until she says, yeah, I read the instructions. I'm like, oh, okay, that was pretty smart. And he put the instruction book on. All right, yeah. Because it's, <laughs> it's military and the instruction book is probably three pages. Like, you know, pull here, press this, pull this, point that way. Face it this and, way, exactly. Yeah. Right. She had it backwards, but still. Like, <laughs> yeah, their first yeah. time, so. <laughs> Where did you learn how to do that? I read the instructions. But you also have, we talked about Bob Miner before, the black stuntman. He plays a, a small role in the film. Kind of gets, he gets murked at the beginning, but okay, he's still. Yeah, he had a kind of quick, man. Knowing his history now, I wish he would, I wish he had a bigger part, you know, but it, yeah. I know there's no room for him with a, in an Arnold movie. Um, right. But yeah knowing, yeah, knowing what I know now, I just wish he had a bigger part. Um, yeah, you have the incredible Bill Duke playing one of the goons. Um, <laughs> he's 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 intimidating without hardly saying anything in this movie. You know, he My doesn't really speak cook. that much. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> no, we don't. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, because <laughs> hey, you don't really have to. You got the young Alyssa Milano. She's playing Arnold's daughter Jenny. You know, she doesn't have a huge role, but she doesn't need to, honestly. No, nah, because she fits, she's the, just, she fits yeah. her part great. Yeah. Right. She's just a victim. Vernon Wells, Bennett, who has a very unique look in this film. There's many reasons why that is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got yeah. questions. As, <laughs> I like him. All right. I like Vernon Wells a lot, man. Because, again, he, he for the 80s, man, he was iconic to me because of his part in uh, Weird Science. You know what I'm saying? And he did uh, Mad yeah, Max, yeah. you know, but he's mm -hmm. just got, he does crazy. He does crazy very well for me, you know what I mean? And yeah. it's believable. Um, and he's got some charisma with him, so he's a cool dude. But I just, the get up that he had, the, the outfit that he had in, 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 this, in this film, man, I just, I, I didn't really like it. And I don't know if they were just yeah. trying to point out his mental state or just make him into something else. Like, I know that, you know, I felt that they were trying to match Arnold's physique with his craziness. Because, you know, right. you look at the, the two, he really wasn't in top condition in there. I mean, he looked like he was slacking a little bit as far as, like, he wasn't he wasn't in the gym. That's what it looked like to me. But, I mean, that might have right. been the reason why he had all the all the outfit stuff on, too, and all the weird stuff. But I just think that he was yeah. kind of like a crazy – he was crazy to match Arnold's physique and his heroism, you know, hero heroicism. So, But yeah. I, I didn't really dig his outfit, man. The leather pants, I mean, come on, man. You, you know, you out in the tropics, like, what's going on here, man? <laughs> like, uh, MTV, like yeah. they snatched him out of MTV or what? You know, what I'm I just I wasn't digging it, but yeah, you know, got to have a villain, right? So, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, the crazy thing is when the film was written, the role was written for it wasn't written for him. Um, mm. He was, yeah the the character was supposed to be the character was supposed to be gay. So it was supposed to be like a Freddie oh. Mercury type of uh, character that that was supposed to be playing Bennett. The I got costume, those vibes, definitely, yeah. Right, the, the the costume department had already created the outfit, hmm. so it wasn't even designed for him. Right. Okay. You know what I'm saying it was supposed to be designed for like someone else. Um, they kind of just went along with it because the budget was, I think, the budget for this movie was like ten million dollars. And, mm. you know, they actually ran out of money at the end, but, you know, I guess they weren't going to go through like a whole redesign and all this stuff. So they end, Vernon Wells ended up wearing the outfit that was already there, which he is why he looks slope, ridiculous. Right. right. He just looks ridiculous in this movie. And like you said, he looks out of shape um, because he kind of was, but he's still a big guy and he's still kind of intimidating, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, he, you know, you look at the scene, he matched Arnold, like, you know, size wise. I mean, it wasn't. Like Arnold was just bigger than him. It wasn't like that. Right. Yeah. Right. 
Um, and he acknowledges the fact that Arnold, who plays John Matrix, is dangerous. Mm-hmm. And, you know, don't take him light. Don't take him light. You know what I'm saying? Right. Say, I'm smart. I know that he could kill everybody here. You are afraid of Matrix. Of course. I'm smart. Yeah. And that's my yeah. advantage because I, you know, I'm not going to underestimate him. Um, yeah, I know him, right? So, yeah, knowing that Vernon Wells was actually supposed to be played by, or uh, his character was supposed to be played by someone else, you know, it makes his mm. get up look, make a lot more sense. Because right, in the movie, that makes it doesn't, that doesn't make any better. sense. Right. Right. David Patrick Kelly. David Patrick <laughs> he Kelly. He plays Sully. Yeah, he plays Sully, and, you, and everybody knows him from the Warriors. You know, and I think he was in the Crow. Right. Um, he, he was, was in the Crow. Know, he Warriors. played Warriors in the Crow. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. He, he 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 plays a good sleazy dude. Yeah, piece of shit. He yeah. piece of crap. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. He's good at that. He's yeah. garbage. Right, right. That's like that's his thing, man. He's perfected that shit. So yeah, he plays one of the goons. And as far as like the main cast, that's 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 mostly it. You know, we got um James Olsen played, you know, Major General uh, Franklin Kirby. He has a recurring right. uh, role throughout the film. But as far as like main roles go, that's that's pretty much all you're gonna care about. Uh yeah. The other people are kind of just secondary. Um, right, I think the main the main villain guy was uh, Dan uh, Hadea that played yeah. President uh, Artist or whatever his name. I can't I can't remember if that's Art, Art, um, Art, Art, Arius. Art, 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 Arius. Arius. There you go. Yeah. yeah. And he he always plays like it was surprising to see him in it. Well, now you know going back and knowing everything that I know now, you know, you think he's always been kind of like a like one of those bum detectives. You know, he's right. always playing like a cop role yeah. or like a detective or some somebody's chief. So it was different yeah. to see him in this this role. You know, now going back and, and looking at the film. This movie starts out with uh, a few guys getting killed by a team of goons, right? Right. And it's uh, Bill Duke and the other guy. What I wanted to ask you is, what the hell was their plan? Because I understand that they were trying to fake the deaths of Matrix's or kill Matrix's crew and then fake the death of Bennett. Right, because Bennett was involved, yeah. Right. So my question is, the first kill is the guy in the neighborhood and they're disguised as garbage men. And they're coming around on on a day that, you know, garbage isn't supposed to be picked up or something. And the guy Mm -hmm. jumps out of bed, he grabs his garbage, goes outside. How, How does that plan work? If it's not a movie, like you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, if, how do you know that he has trash to bring out? And how do you know that he's going, he's going to be the one guy that runs out there with the trash. Right. It's, it's, like, uh, that's, that was all Hollywood there, man. Right. <laughs> like all Hollywood. Yeah. That's one of those things I even, you know, years ago, I was like, that plan doesn't really make sense. Like what if he didn't come outside? You know what I'm saying? It, you are better off just going in this house and killing him. You killed him outside in, you know, in a cul-de-sac with unsilenced submachine guns. Exactly. So everybody can see you. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. It's just, it may, and, and you, and your getaway car is a garbage <laughs> truck. <laughs> My other gripe with that scene also was this. Okay. These guys are supposed to be, uh, the creme la the creme, you know what I'm saying? Like, like they're working with Matrix, you know, so they're yeah. they're all, you know, experienced operatives, right? This guy right. comes out like like Joe Blow, the freaking office worker, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And gets smoked like that. And I just, I, I it yeah. blew my mind, like, wow. Like, and and the other guy that, that got killed at the uh, at the car dealership, like, just yeah. no kind of military bearing, yeah, like up front at all, man. Yeah, and. <laughs> That's that's the other thing I was I was gonna bring up. It's like these guys are supposed to be like elite special forces soldiers. Yes. Like this dude's living in this neighborhood, and let I me mean, I'm just say like just being around people I grew up with, who had parents. My my dad, you know, was infantry. You know, eighty uh, second airborne, first sergeant. Being around a lot of military people, right? Right. The guy when he gets up to take his trash out doesn't strike me as this ex special forces dude. You know what I'm saying? Nope. Like he's he looks like he he sells vacuums for a living or some shit. 
Yeah, exactly. Right. The the car salesman guy doesn't strike me as some ex special forces, you know, super soldier. Nope. He just strikes me as a freaking car salesman. Car salesman, yeah. yeah. Right. And it's like it's almost I can almost see where like maybe the writers are are maybe diminishing these guys' appearance to make Matrix appear more of a super soldier than they were. Exactly. Right. I, I can agree with that a hundred percent. Right. Yeah. Right. And that's that's my only justification. All right, that's that's me reaching, honestly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, yeah. But it, yeah, it's because, spot on though. I, I dig that. Right. Yeah. Right. So like I just think that that's one way to do it. I I would just say like if it was me writing this, I would say no. I'd have like the dude who's who they killed in the morning, you know, he looked like Dwayne Johnson and you know, he's kind of ready for yeah. shit. But they they sneak up on they they get it they get the drop on him one way or another you know what I'm saying right. the guy at the right. car dealership like he's he's like the uh, I don't know the the boss of the car dealership and he don't take mm-hmm. no shit and they 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 get the drop on him or something like that like that right and he's built like you know he's built like you know Stone Cold you know what I'm saying yeah uh, yeah because then it makes it seem like okay they got these dudes who were who were they were kind of ready. Yeah, you know, and then when you get yeah. the Matrix, Matrix is like he's he's on a whole nother level. That just makes him right. look like more, even more of a badass to me. You know, right. if you if they get to drop on two regular dudes, I'm like, okay, like whatever. They're two regular dudes, who cares? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. And that's how it felt. That's exactly how right. it felt. Exactly. Right. So yeah, that's just one of those one of those nitpicks military, about this movie. Man. But right, us being military, we know even if you're. Even if you're humping a radio, man, you got to be in shape, dude. These guys look like right. like like just regular schmegular motherfuckers, man. And, right, just, right. <laughs> and there was no loss. Like, okay, he's part of his team. Okay, ooh, man, well, what the hell was he working with, man? Yeah, you know. So right, I agree with right. you 100. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and you know, Bennett is supposed to be the last guy that they take out. It was just a setup, but you know, he's he's fucking fisherman you know what i'm saying like yeah and and it didn't i didn't even understand how them blowing up the boat with him on it but he didn't die because they didn't show the way it's edited they don't show him they don't show that there's any way for him to have escaped that boat right you know what i'm saying you see him dive over or nothing right right you see anything so but you know 80s movies logic whatever we we can we can let that one slide um yeah but yeah, that was my whole thing that like his his elite team that had made all these enemies around the world, these dudes was trash. That means I feel trash. like Matrix was doing yeah. all the work, you know. Exactly. <laughs> Go ahead, stay here, I'll take care of it. Hell yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> like one one was communication and the other one like made lunch. And that was that was their job. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> sandwich maker, sergeant sandwich maker. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's funny though, yeah. 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 Oh man! But anyway, um, <laughs> after we after you get that scene, you know it starts with the opening credits, which I actually really enjoy. His opening credits, it's cheesy as hell. Yeah, cheesy as hell. But you got Arnold. You the first time you see him, you know, he's flexing and uh, of course. you know logging. <laughs> yeah, out here logging in the mountains, carrying. It was a fake log. It was a fake log, but. He's carrying his fake log on his shoulders. That's just like ten feet long. If it was real, bro, no, he need uh he need like a four wheel or something to drag that shit from where it was. Size um, of a telephone pole. <laughs> right. He just tote he just toting that shit. So yep. that's one of those things that like, you know, when you're young, it was eighties, so you didn't have we didn't have the same frame of reference with like reality back then. And right. It and and like you see it back then, you like yeah, he could probably carry that shit for real. You know what I'm saying? But like now he's like, yeah. no, nah, that shit heavy as hell. Like he'd get like three Hell-no. steps from that thing and put it down. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> like how do you even pick it up? Cut. Like, right? <laughs> like picking it up would have been hell just to begin with. Yeah, you, your, your frame of reference is a little different. But you get the scenes of him with Jenny and, you know, they're fishing and feeding the deer and stuff, eating ice cream. It's all cheesy. and, and But, you right. know, the, the opening credits are going and you know, you get that that score. I actually, I really appreciate the score for this movie. I, I think James Horner did it, and he's done like yeah. 
Willow, Cocoon. I think he's did he's done the Star Trek. He did the Aliens, and you can yeah. hear you can hear the little like like parts that the, you know through the Alien yeah. movies and stuff. There's little the little notes and the little uh, different yeah. instruments. It's all similar to like the other film. So yeah, he did a great job with the score. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's got those steel drums. I think he did. Did he do Forty Eight Hours? I know he yeah, did he something. Did 48 hours. Yep. Yeah, he did Forty Eight um, Hours. Yeah, he did Forty Eight Hours. So yeah, there's, there's some similarities in the soundtracks of those movies. And there's actually another Eddie Murphy connection to this movie that I'll get to later. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really appreciate the the score because it kind of sets the tone, and it's not like it's not overly done, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? It's like no, not no, too it's bombastic. It. it doesn't really, yeah, it doesn't get in the way. And it's it's very it's a very unique sound for this point in the '80s. This was kind of like a tropical blend with yeah. some jazz. It was really nice, yeah. man. Really nicely, nicely put together, man. Really nice. It yeah. fit the film great, man. Yep. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, after we get uh the old corny intro, would you like to go into the the what happens after that? Well, you know, you, you're introduced to to Matrix and and Jenny, and. Uh, you know, you kind of see like their their father daughter bond, and uh, the fact that you know uh, she's kind of worried that you know he's going to leave her, you know, because she kind of knows his job, you know, know what he did and stuff like that. And uh, you know, they're having lunch, and then you've got the the colonel uh, or the major, whoever it was, uh, shows up out of nowhere and uh, comes down to alert Matrix that you know his team, the members of his team, have been hit. So he's going to go to the local government and try to, you know, try to make sure he's got extra security. So he leaves a couple of elite guys there to help Matrix <laughs> be guarded. Um, meanwhile, the bad guys are already there. And as soon as the the, uh, the, the major takes off, you know, they, they do a hit and they blow away one of the guys right off the back, which I thought was garbage. Yeah. And then the other guy, you see, yeah. uh, who's, a, you know, Bob that plays the stunts and stuff, uh, he goes in with a busted up arm and he's t- taking a few bullets, you know, and he's in the house talking to Matrix and trying to buy Matrix some time so he can go to the shed and get his uh, his hardware. And when Matrix is gone, you know, they smoke him, take his daughter, yeah. and they're already heading out and they leave the, I guess, the second in command there to talk shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which Matrix wasn't trying to hear, so he smokes him right off the back. <laughs> that, that, that was that was a funny part too, man. He was like, yeah, "Wrong." That's Ooh. a badass scene. I'm like, yes, get this guy out of the way. Yeah, no talking, no Doing talking. This, they got my all this talking and shit. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes in, and see, this is what I mean. Like again, Hollywood with the over exaggeration. Like they did so much stuff in that small little bit about it. A little bit of time. Yeah. They killed. They killed the other dude. They took his daughter. They they trashed the engine in his freaking uh, his Bronco. So he's got to push the Bronco down the hill, trying to catch these guys <laughs> and trying to run into him and stuff like that. Yeah. He misses and just you know just became a big mess. And then they they take him captive, which I'm just like wow. And then we're introduced right. to Bennett, which I thought was funny because uh, Arnold's reaction to Bennett kind of was like, I don't know, maybe he's just like okay. Bennett, you know, but it wasn't like he was like, Bennett, what the, you know, so right. that kind of got me like, what, what's up with this? But again, we find out that their their relationship really wasn't that great because he got kicked out of the team for being a right. psycho. Right. So they take him captive. <laughs> they go back to wherever this remote area is where the main guy is. And that's when we're uh, uh, introduced to, uh, whatchamacallit, what's the guy's name again? President Aries or Aries. Yeah. Ar- Aries. Um, Arius, and he basically uh, tells the plot of uh, what he wants Matrix to do, um, because apparently Matrix and his team helped, uh, I guess, liberate that 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 area of the country where he was trying to take yeah. it over. So he wants Matrix, since Matrix has a, a a better relationship and friends with the current president, you know, to get close to him using that that relationship and smoke him, so that he can yeah. come back in and take and reclaim his. Uh, you know his his reign of whatever, yeah. <laughs> and uh, he says if you if you do it, I'll give you a kid back. You know if not, I'm gonna smoke her. And of course we yeah. all know. You know, and then right. he, he emphasizes because the kid's not in the room while they got him on the table, which I thought was yeah. was cool. And then they bring her in because you're looking at him, you're like you can't do nothing to this guy. You're like man, f yeah. you, man, I ain't doing shit. <laughs> yeah. And then they bring the kid in and he, she's yeah. all bound and crying and stuff. Yeah. And he's just like he just puts his head back like fuck. <laughs> 
I'm done, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For the moment, I'm done. Right. So um, he kind of goes along with the plan. That is the plot the synopsis. <laughs> right. Yeah. That is the plot yeah, synopsis the of, of this movie. Right. Um, I just wanted to go back because I got I got two little gripes with the sink. It, it, let me tell you what's crazy. I got so many gripes with this movie, but I love it so much. <laughs> exactly. Love-hate relationship. Yep. <laughs> right. I love it so much. First, when Franklin, when Kirby, General Kirby flies in and he's talking to Arnold, you know, he drops off the two soldiers, you know, for protection or whatever. He's explaining to Arnold that these guys are going to find you, but, you know, I'm going to make some calls. We're going to, we're going to find these guys before they can get to you. A little later on, you find out that the, the guys were tracking, I don't know if they were tracking Kirby or something, but they were using, they were basically waiting for Kirby to contact Arnold so they could find out where Arnold was. Right. But retroactively, that doesn't make sense because as soon as Kirby lands with the, in the helicopter, drops the guys off and flies away, the guys are already in the bushes. They are already there. Yeah. To, right. So that means they got there before the current, before the general did. So how the hell did they use him? It doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't have to. I'm just saying that like, it, it's when you think about it, like, oh, that's backwards. It, they, yeah. they, like, they were already there. They didn't need the general to find Major. They was already there. Like, shit didn't even matter. Like, my, my thing is, why did they even wait till the colonel flew, to the general flew away? Just start shooting. Shoot the general. Shoot Smoke Majors. everybody. Yeah. Right. They could have shot Major. <laughs> they, I know they didn't want to shoot Major, but like, I'm just saying, like, smoke everybody right there. Yeah. Why wait for him to leave? You know, or start shooting when the helicopter's landing, making all that damn noise. Like, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> just, yeah. It, that part just didn't make sense. It just didn't make sense. The other other thing is when, <laughs> and it is a badass scene. He just smokes the dude. He looks he looks out the window and sees them leaving with Jenny, like going mm-hmm. down the hill. He's like, wrong. Bah! Then you gotta cooperate, right? Wrong. <laughs> um. Yep. Headshot. The, right. <laughs> <laughs> and and I also thought it was funny when he asked uh, Bob Miner, he's laying down. He was like. Stay down when he was like, You think I could smell them? He's like, I did. Like, you yeah. smelled them, you smelled them in the bushes? Like, cause he did duck like before they started shooting. He's like, he looked, he looked like I guess they smelled like they were about to shoot somebody. I don't know. But he like he looked and he he grabbed Jenny and they just smoked the soldier and whatnot. I'm like, all right, it's movie logic, but whatever. Uh, yeah. yeah. When when he when he takes the Bronco and he's pushing it down the hill, right? He obviously doesn't have any power steering. A lot of vehicles back then didn't have power steering. If you've never driven a yeah. car, folks, without power steering, that shit is not easy. All right? Right. If if you're just sitting still, it's hard as hell to turn that wheel. But anyway, he's he's rolling <laughs> down that mountain. No control, no brakes. Yeah. Like, oh, like, and that, the car is bouncing all around and whatnot. And, you know, then it flips and then blows up. I just thought, like, watching it is one of those things, like, this is absolutely not possible. Right, and this sets <laughs> this sets the tone for what you're about to get for into the in this entire movie. film. <laughs> right, exactly. So for the like I said, film. right, I said it's a gripe, but then it's also like it's just still kind of cool though. It, it kind of sets the tone for the rest of the movie, and you know you get into some ridiculous shit now. Yeah, Imp- the impossible can be done. <laughs> right, <laughs> only only by Matrix though, <laughs> not nobody else. Right. Nobody else gets that. <laughs> you were just talking about, you gave the plot synopsis. And here's where you get, I want to say, the first or second connection to Action Jackson when they take Matrix to the airport. Because the plan is he's supposed to fly to this island, Valverde or whatever, and, and like right. said, assassinate the president. The president, well, right. So Sully shows up and uh, takes him. They escort him to the airport, and there's the black guy uh, with the Jerry curl, yep. who's also in the bar scene in Action Jackson. Papa Doc, I forgot to pull, he's at Papa right. Doc. Yeah, I forgot <laughs> to I forgot to pull his name, but yeah, he's he's in that scene. And I want to say there's four. I was counting when I was watching the movie. I think there's four people in this movie that are also in Action Jackson. Bob Miner, so. right. 
Bob Miner. Yeah, Bob Miner. That 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 guy. Um, and there's two more people. It'll come to me. It'll come to me soon. But I, when I was watching, I was like, that's the fourth person that's in Action Jackson in this movie. Yeah, I think Bob Miner, Bill Duke, definitely. Yeah, yeah, um, Bill Duke. Yeah. Then you got this guy, the the tall guy with the Jerry curl, and there's yeah. one more guy that I think we're we're missing. Yeah, mm-hmm. this is definitely one more. I can't for whatever reason I can't think of it right now, but I, there's right. definitely one more. So they take him to the airport, and you know, I when I was watching it again, I was, I thought it was funny how they just kind of walk through security like no problem. This, yeah. this is back. This is back in the day when you could walk with someone all the way to their gate. You know what I'm saying? Like yep. it, there was no like TSA checkpoint in between. There was security, but like you could, you could, if I was taking someone to the airport and, you know, w- watching them fly away, I could go all the way to the gate with them, even if, even gate, if I don't have a ticket. Right. Yep. So Sully tells Matrix, hey, look, uh, my boy right here, he going he gonna to fly with you. Make sure you you land and, and when you're supposed to in, in 11 hours or whatever. Um and Sully's like the lookout to make sure the plane takes off. He's gonna call the people, say, "Hey, the plane's on the way, right?" Yep, they're in the air. Mm-hmm. So this is where you know the ridiculousness of that downhill slalom uh, in the in the Bronco gets taken to another level of ridicularity. But it's still awesome as shit <laughs> because <laughs> Matrix is on the plane with the with the dude and. The guys like you know matrix he, he, arnold's like cracking jokes and shit like being just being slick i'm carrying on luggage just him and right. dude's like you know one liner you, right you don't close your mouth i'll nail it shut now first of all first of all <laughs> bro look at arnold in this movie right like who are you threatening bro like unless you unless you like some golden gloves like superstar that you know we don't know about. Like you look right. like a regular ass dude that's just tall. Regular ass All dude, right. yeah. You're talking to a freaking Olympic god almost. Like right. <laughs> who, dude is right. chiseled out like ridiculous. Right. Who who you know who you know is like special forces super soldier. Exactly. You talking shit to this cat. Like you bro, you got balls on you. Yeah. Like, bro, just do your job, man. Fly with the motherfucker and, and just you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah. Like, yeah. S- stick to your lane, bro. Yeah. Um, <laughs> plane's getting ready to take off. Arnold's looking around. He asked for a blanket and a pillow because he's setting up he's, he's setting up his escape already. And he does the old slick lean down and sit back up and elbow the dog shit out that dude. Yeah. Took it, like, just knocked him out right there. All this shit would crack the fuck up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Face was just inward. Right. Yeah. And, and and then you know wrapped his arm around him and broke his neck. Pop, laid him back with the pillow, all nice and gentle. You know what I'm saying? You know, tucked him in, he tucked him in, right. and everything. Put the hat on him, <laughs> and 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 then he cracks. This movie's full of one liners. And he cracks a one liner with the stewardess. Uh, Could you please not bother my friend? He's dead tired. Don't disturb my friend. He's dead tired. You know, like <laughs> just like exactly. what was the point of that? He had to say. <laughs> He, he gets up and goes underneath the plane, underneath the uh, in the cargo area, and opens the landing gear like hatch. And this is why the plane is taxiing, and in the, in the midst mm-hmm. of taking off, because when the plane is taking off, like he lands in a swamp, yeah, or like a marsh. It's like a marsh, you know what I'm saying? Like a marsh, yeah. Um, you know, cattails and water and shit. Uh, so anyway, that that part always confused me, but. I thought it was strange that he waited until he got that high to jump into the marsh because jumping in water at, from a height is just, you might as well be, you might as well be landing on, you know, earth. So yeah, I wonder why like he waited so long to jump out of the plane. Like I, I feel like he would have gotten just as hurt if he had just jumped off when it was still, you know, taxiing on the on ground. ground like, he yeah. would have rolled and yeah, but all right. So he falls, he sets his watch, and now now we're on the clock. So one thing they keep kind of consistent in the movie is like the timing of it. Like he had 11 yeah, hours from the time pressure. the plane took off. Right. Yep. So, you know, periodically throughout the movie, he checks his watch and it's like, you know, nine hours, two hours, whatever. And they keep that right. theme of he has only a certain amount of time to get to this island to save his daughter. 
Yeah, that's just one of those ridiculous things where he falls. It's, I mean, it's got to be a couple hundred feet. He falls into yeah. this. Yeah, that was, a, that was a long drop, man. Yeah. Right. And he just, <laughs> yeah. And, only he and not only survive that shit. Right. And not only did he survive, it, it's not like he just survived. He got up like nothing happened. Yep. No problem. Like he just Ooh. jumped. Right. Got like he just jumped off a milk carton or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Go. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. He just pulls his jacket off and he's running. And I'm like, yo. And he ran a long way on that airport, on that tarmac. You know, he hops on the back of that truck and, you know, and escapes. Next scene. I, I wanted I wanted your opinion on this next scene, the next major scene, which is in the mall. Can you, you, want, you okay. want to talk about that for a second? Uh, all right. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that yeah. Let's, let's get into it. Um, so <laughs> finds a, a, a stewardess, I guess, who introduced that's Ray Dong Charles character. I think her name was Cindy. And uh, yeah. he tries to get her to, to help him. Uh, he kind of abducts her for the vehicle while she's trying to, while he's trying to uh, follow Sully. Um, and uh, he notices, I like the fact that he kind of like was monitoring you know, certain things while uh, he was looking for ideas on things to do. And he saw that, you know, Sully was trying to take a pass at her and stuff like that at the airport and whatnot. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of cool. So then he made his move. And of course, you know, she comes off as, you know, just a regular stewardess. She don't want no smoke. So she's all, you know, petrified and scared. But, you know, she goes with the flow. Um, and Sully goes to uh, to the mall, I guess, to do some type of drop to get some passports for, I guess, maybe some more troops or something like that. And uh, he doesn't really, like, you know, notice Matrix really doesn't talk a lot to Ray Dong Chong to Cindy. But uh, he kind of gives her enough. And she's, at this point, she's still like, you know, I got to get away from this guy, you know. Yeah. Um, so they get to the mall, and she's, she, he, he kind of levels with her once they get up there where Sully's at. And he's like, look, you got to help me. I've got 11 hours, you know, or less. And I got to, you know, they've got my daughter and, if he knows I'm here and I'm not on a plane or if he sees me, I'm, you know, my, my whole thing is just done. So can you please help me? And I think she was, you know, I think she was kind of interested, interested, but I don't think she kind of believed the, the story fully, but she kind of goes with the flow and goes in there and in the bar, you know, they've got a security guard. So she goes and talks to the security guard. Hey, I got this big guy. He's, he's abducted me. He's got my car. He, 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 I don't I don't understand what's going on. But can you please help me? I'm in this tight, tight situation so he's like okay i'll check it out you know um so he goes over there you know he looks and then matrix is kind of like <laughs> the whole peeping behind the pole thing yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, really the pole like, like this yeah, big he's like yeah <laughs> i'm like okay all right this is a movie so you gotta have something like this so no problem mm -hmm. so he goes and he makes the call and then you got the guy downstairs looking like jj yeah hey man i need yeah. some help this guy up here he might be a weirdo you know and then he, he's like talking the guy's talking to the girls hey you want to see me kick some ass there's a guy over here that may be a wacko i don't think i can handle him alone i'll be right there want to see me kick some ass <laughs> my god the freak out of here shit. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway matrix is monitoring the whole thing while sully's in there doing a the deal and whatnot and sully kind of catches eye of her he comes out and stuff like that and by then you know the security guards are making their move and i think that matrix kind of understands the fact that it's not working right because when she acts like he's coming out and she kind of ducks back he's like okay something's wrong and then the security on. guards walk up on him yeah yeah and there yeah. it was so he goes through this whole freaking thing of beating the hell out of like what 10 or 20 security guys man which i've never yeah. seen a mall with all of these security guys or a mall with this presidential yeah. shit <laughs> yeah you know what i'm saying like yeah. wow you know you and that's the galleria in la right right yeah so, i mean if they got that type of security i mean wow you know we need to go there yeah. and check this shit out <laughs> right. you got their own, yeah, their own police force in that joint yeah, yeah pretty much and i mean they, everybody that they had was on him man you know yep. and i think that the light bulb went off for her when she saw the fact of how sully reacted when she saw when he saw him now, give me a quarter, give me a quarter. And yeah. she's like, fuck, I'm going to screw I'm going to screw this guy. Yep. And he's actually telling me the truth. So Sully makes a makes a run for the uh, the phone booth. Matrix runs him down, pulls the phone booth out of the wall. I think you mentioned this a couple couple of movies ago when yeah. you were talking about, yeah. <laughs> you know, throwing it down. He gets out, guns are shooting. Yeah. You got 20 security guys. I guess the, 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 the impossible is happening. It's one guy's yes. getting the hell out of the whole security squad. 
Yeah. You know, so that that is the unbelievableness of that scene. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He does a freaking Tarzan across the mall, man, on a on a plastic tube or wherever that shit is. Uh, yeah. Lands on the elevator, jumps off, chases Sully out in the parking lot. Uh, the the like I said, the level of ridiculousness just keeps kind of amping up. Yeah. Through this movie, yeah, definitely. And, with that. Yeah, you start to realize, okay, this dude is pretty much unkillable. Yeah. Yeah. He, he 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 threw off like twenty dudes. Yeah, they had you know they just kind of did one of this thing, and, right? And they they all flew off, and he he picked he pulled a phone. He didn't pick up a phone booth. He pulled, pulled that, that shit out of out of, out of out of the floor in the wall first <laughs> with a person in it, right? With with a human being inside it, <laughs> and flipped that shit over like. Bro, this dude, this dude's incredible already. He's the Terminator. Yeah, and he's the actual Terminator. Seriously. Um, so and one thing I want to add too, man, the fact that Sully, again, my my biggest gripe is you know the help that the villains hire. Uh, yeah. Sully, Sully couldn't hit the freaking broadside of a barn, bro. I mean, he's yeah. shooting, shooting, and ain't hitting shit. He shot the one security guy. Yeah, you know. But I'm like, he wasn't hitting shit. I'm like, dude, why you even get a piece, man? You, you, right. Terrible trash. Right, right. <laughs> you garbage. Missing all kinds of shots. Killing innocent mothers. <laughs> right. And, and like, I always wonder, like, why he didn't just, like, he shot at Matrix through, from the phone booth, right? Matrix coming at him in the phone booth. So he shoots through the phone right. booth. He misses. Right. But he doesn't shoot again. Like, he had, nope. Arnold has time to grab the phone booth, shake it, snatch it out of the ground. You know what I'm saying? Like, he could have just kept shooting out of the, Oh, yeah, he the movie would have been over. Magazine, yeah. Right, the movie would have been over right there. That would have been it. Yeah, um, it. Yeah. <laughs> they follow Sully and like up into up into the hills and whatnot out there in L.A. And it's Porsche, Porsche was a yeah, Porsche 911, I think. It, it might have been his bright yellow Porsche. Yeah, and you know they they wreck. So here's some more implausibility in this movie. First of all, the seat that Arnold Schwarzenegger was sitting in. It, it, it wasn't there because he snatched no, it he out early. Ripped it out, yeah. Right. <laughs> so when they make Sully wreck his uh, Porsche, you know, flips over on the side, they hit a telephone pole. Yeah. Not at a slow speed. No, nah, they were rolling. <laughs> right. And once again, man, Arnold, he has like a, like one of those shields over like, like the characters from Dune, man, like you know, any 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 fast any fast impacts are just you know is they're impervious, he's impervious to that shit because he they hit the telephone pole, man, and you see them both like bow. Are you right? Yeah, yeah, that was hard hit. Right, so he hops out. <laughs> he hops out, pulls Sully out of the car, which uh, during the making of the director actually wanted him to pick Sully up. Like out of the car, mm. and Arnold was like, "Hey, that's impossible." Like, I I know y'all think I'm strong, but like, what yeah. you're asking me to do is like physically impossible. Uh, it's not. It's gonna look stupid on camera. Cause I'm be like, "Oh," you know, trying to pick him up. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's why they had like a cable. They had like a cable on Sully when he picks him up out of the car. Um, and you, if you look, you can see the cable on his foot uh, when he's holding him because he's. Doing something else that's absolutely impossible. He's holding a human being with one arm outstretched. It's one arm. L- yep. Literally imp- I don't give a damn how strong you are. That yeah. shit leverage is a real thing. You know, physics yeah. and that all that shit is real. Physics is real, absolutely. Right. You can't <laughs> if you could hold somebody like that, you ain't you ain't having a conversation with the ass. Like nah. so anyway, ain't nobody rotator that strong. Um so you know he's he he told Sully early. I forgot this, this is a callback, and I love movies that have yeah. callbacks. He told Sully early. He said, "Hey man, I, you know Sully, you're a funny guy. I like you. That's so why I'm gonna kill you last." Yeah. Well, that it turns out Sully Sully's the first dude he kills because he's holding him over that cliff, and Sully's like, "Hey, Matrix, remember you told me you're gonna kill me last." I lied. Remember Sully when I promised to kill you last? That's right, Matrix. You did. I lied. And, and dropped him. Um, but be- before that, he got the he found the keys that Sully had to that hotel because he was trying to right. find out where he was uh, meeting, you know, whoever. Because um, I don't remember, I don't think he knew who Cook was at the time, but he knew he was meeting somebody. No, he didn't know who Cook right. was. Right. Yeah. 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 
that was the um, meeting because so, I think I think uh, Sully was trying to keep the fact that he was meeting Cook from him, but I mean he already right. had he saw the keys. It's like, duh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. hotel, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's, yeah, I don't he need you anymore. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, this goes into like a, a small blooper in this movie that even I noticed as a kid is when, you know, they're, they're Radon Chong's little car is wrecked, uh, yeah. little fear or whatever it was is wrecked and, you know, they need a car now. So Matrix f- flips over the Porsche that's still drivable. They get yeah. in, they get in the Porsche, the one side, it was the driver's was it the driver's side i think it was the driver's side it was all jacked the driver's side was smashed up yeah that's right they were ramming each other yep right it was all smashed up he pushes the car over still smashed up they get in start it still smashed up well when the scene changes and there's like definitely not arnold and definitely not um radon chong in the car uh right and the car is pulling away it is pristine fresh out the <laughs> I didn't notice that. <laughs> Bro. That's funny. Not fresh off, like fresh off the boat, like not even fresh off the lot. Like, like your shit is pristine. If you get a chance, you just get a chance to fast forward <laughs> to that scene and watch that is absolutely perfect. Uh, just small little blooper. Um, one one Check quick thing, <laughs> one, one quick thing I wanted to mention in the mall, there's actually a deleted scene with General Kirby. And General Kirby comes oh, okay. to the mall and the police are there investigating everything that happened. And the captain is like, you know, APB on this dude, this big guy, whatever. Um, Cause he, I want him behind bars. So General Kirby mm-hmm. comes in. I'm, I'm pretty sure there's probably two reasons why they cut this scene. One, it just kind of slows the movie down a little bit, but Kirby's talking okay. to the captain about matrix. And the other reason they cut it is because it is basically identical to uh first blood where, ah. Uh where the general is talking to um uh is it Robert is Den- uh, the actor, I forgot. The one that was playing the police the, chief. The sheriff. Right. Right, sheriff. Um it was basically identical to the the colonel in that movie talking to him about how much of a badass Rambo is. And right. basically like, you know, if you're gonna send more guys, you better have a whole lot of body bags and blah, 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 blah. It is almost you could put those two scenes together and be like, damn, did the same person write this? Because they're like almost identical. And it makes perfect sense why they just cut that from the movie. Because I'm like, hey, I just saw this in, in Rambo. Um, but anyway, that's the like one little deleted scene. There's, there's only a few actual deleted scenes in this movie. They they kept it pretty tight, honestly. And that was a good call, too, because you look at it, the the uh, Rambo came out May 22nd of uh, 85. Yeah. And then, you know, Commando came out October 4th. Yeah. So just months in between each other, they yeah. would have been accused of freaking biting. So. Right. <laughs> You're taking yeah. our stuff. Yeah. Damn you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Is when they get to the hotel and, you know, he's looking, looking around and whatnot and they hear uh, Cook pull up, Bill Duke. Yep. So Arnold has a smart idea. He turns the shower on, he you know, opens up Radon Chong's blouse that, like, you know, somebody. Should, like she was there with Sully and they're having a good time. Right, she answers the right. door to cook. Cook's like, where's Sully? She's like, he's in the shower. He said, you know, he comes in to wait. He basically gets kind of surprised by Arnold. And and he Arnold Arnold steals him, like, bow. Like, <laughs> you hear yeah. him yell, like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they jump. start mm-hmm. they start fighting. And Bill Duke says, uh, this green bread is gonna kick your big ass. And I was like, <laughs> okay. I was like, I eat, I eat green berets for breakfast, you know. And they go mm-hmm. hand to hand, and it, it, it switches back and forth between Bill Duke and his stunt double, his obvious stunt double, if you're watching it. But it's a decent little fight scene, you know. They break through the wall, and there's a couple yeah. doing some freaky, freaky shit next door. But anyway, they have this uh, fight scene, and Radon Charles they like, oh my god, these guys eat too much red meat, all this macho shit. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Duke pulls out that cannon. Yeah. And and shoots at Arnold and misses. And I don't I don't know what's up with these goons in these movies. If you miss the first shot, why aren't you taking the second one? I don't know, bro. 
Yeah. Because he's like, I mean, why would what? he try to pull? Why would he try to pull that close anyway? You know, you would shoot right. from the hip if anything, man. He just try to get the whole arm out there like you right. know, a freaking a uh, 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 dirty Harry. No, bro, not right. that close. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> Like, Arnold had time. Arnold had time to like combat roll and mule kick him in the chest before right. he got off a second shot. Um, so eventually, you know, he kills. He kills Cook. You know, gets uh, impales him on a on a piece of glass. And uh, what I th- what I thought was always think was hilarious is that like after he's impaled, his head goes like this, and his blood coming out of his mouth. Arnold grabs him, he's like talk talk. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> what the fuck is he gonna hell? say? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cook. He has a hole out, in his man. chest. Something sticking out of my chest. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> saying shit, but uh, uh, where is she? Yeah, come on, man. Yeah, you should have done that in the beginning. That, right? <laughs> in the beginning. Yeah. Right. When you rocked him, when you rocked him the first time, you should have just put him in, a, put him in a full Nelson and start asking questions. All right. You could waited till you could had the information right there. Right, right. You wait till this dude's lungs are pierced to ask him, talk. He got shit to say now. <laughs> yeah, dead. That's it. <laughs> yeah. I thought that fight scene was well choreographed. It'd be interesting yeah. to see who uh, the one that kind of like put that whole scene together because you notice in the beginning, you know, even though Cook got snuck, he kind of hung in there for a little bit, but yeah. eventually, you know, Matrix got the best of him, which I thought was like, again, it was, it was well done. You know, it wasn't like Arnold came away unscathed and i like that because sometimes these movies show these characters where they don't even get a, a piece of hair move you know what i'm saying yeah. dodge and bing bing and that's it and then actually you see this guy getting hit and he's returning blows which is you want to yeah. see that exchange because that's what makes the fight you know yep. and bill duke I, I would think that you know between him and uh the the last guy the, the main guy um bennett i think bill duke's character was neck and neck as far as like on the intimidation yeah. level yeah, as far as being yeah. like a threat to to make put up the best fight. Yeah, yeah. Other right. than Bennett, he put up the best fight. Yep. Right. So yeah. it was good. Good thing. Because <laughs> in in the midst of this, we get like scenes of Bennett and uh, Arius, you know, talking about you know Matrix and when he, how long is he supposed to supposed to be before he gets there? And you see right. the daughter. They they put her in like that room in that house, and you know, no furniture, or whatever. Yeah. They throw her in there, and you know, she's just kind of. They locked the door and they got the guards. She got the the bad end of the stick with this whole deal because they really, you can tell that they were mistreating her. She was dirty. She looked like she yeah. wasn't being fed. They just, and she really, like, uh, for Alyssa Mil- Milano to kind of be so young, she really kind of fell into that whole I'm captured thing. And it yeah. really, her acting ability really came through for her to be so young. Yeah. I mean, this was believable. Like, man, and you know, Bennett was snatching her around like damn, he's snatching her arm off. Every time you see, get over here, get your ass. I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's like eleven. Right? Oh, right. Yeah, and I mean, you look at the scenes like it, it was. He wasn't like playing with her. Like he nah. was actually like handling her a little bit. So I was like, geez, Louise, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like at at this point, you know, they get uh, they go into Cook's car, and he's, he's looking for clues to figure out where they're keeping Jenny. Yeah, Radon Chom finds the. Uh, the receipt for like fuel, the fuel receipt or whatever in his glove box. Right. And this, there's a whole bunch of like coincidental chain of events in this movie that like, all right, it's, it's a movie. I don't know if these clues would be just set out for them like this in real life. Mm-hmm. And they're like, okay, we're going to go to the, uh, the, uh, this warehouse, this, this place where that was on this uh, receipt. They go, they sneak in, they look at the uh, map that they had out there that the guys had out and they figure out, know where she is probably being kept because of they take the clues of like the fuel receipt like how much fuel and the plane and put together a bunch of clues none of this shit really matters y'all if you're watching this movie honestly you just like this this have to they have to lead you to the point where okay let's get to where jenny is so we can right. kick some ass all right we'll throw some so, fluff in between yeah 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 so they get what they need. They get the information they need to get back out of that warehouse. When they're leaving, you know, Ray Don Sean is like, okay, we going to the airport. She, he's like, no, we need to go shopping. Right. And this is where we get our next, our next kind of scene is the scene of them going to the army surplus store. This is one of those things that like, 
okay, this is this guy. This is in L.A. So they're still in L.A. Right. And I'm like, okay, are there really just bulldozers just laying around in like downtown or whatever part of I, L.A. This I is? wondered the same thing, man. Wondered the same thing. Yeah, like, because there happened to be one there. Right. And <laughs> and Matrix is so well versed on so many things that he yeah. even knows how to properly drive a bulldozer. Yeah. You know, he knows how to pull them laterals and shit. And, okay, all right, I, I, I'll let that one ride. But, like, where was his bulldozer? Because he obviously, uh, he didn't, that. right, he didn't live here. That's the thing. No. Like, he didn't, he didn't live in L.A. He definitely wasn't in L.A. So he's so well-versed on so many things that he knows that, like, okay, in the dead of night in L.A., I can go to this one spot where I know that there's a bulldozer and an army surplus store next door. Okay, and to me, it, lo- it looked like they were like in a commercial area. Like, where the heck were they? What did they need a bulldozer out here for? I didn't see any lot being built. You know, exactly. this is weird. It's exactly, yeah. where point. the hell the bulldozer come from? <laughs> yeah, it's parked conveniently it's the... on the side of the road. Right, right. <laughs> it's the same as like you know, how come your favorite characters don't die in movies? It's yeah. called plot ar- plot armor. That's why, because the plot requires it to be <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, right. The movie got to happen. So. He gets a bulldozer and bulldozes the army surplus store that has like bars and shit on the windows, but apparently no Another store. A, a, apparently no alarm. I don't know. Maybe it had a silent alarm because the cops did short. Probably right, a so. silent, silent alarm. Right. Yeah. And he also knew because he's so well versed at so many things. He also knew there was a hidden area of the store, and he was pressing underneath the counter. He's like, "Come on, come on!" Mm-hmm. And the things like, and it's like. Four walls oh, of guns. Arsenal. Right. right. <laughs> guns, grenades, rocket launchers. Like, yo, this this isn't military surplus. Like, that shit is the C4? shit they... war Right. C4? That, yeah, the claymores. Freaking claymores. Yeah. Like, this isn't shit that the military will let go of. All right. right. This isn't army surplus. This is... He stole this shit. Whoever the, the person that owns the store. That's the way he had him behind a wall. Shady. So, right. <laughs> So, like, you know, during that whole scene, like he's getting, like, vest and, you know, camo and boots and everything he needs uh, to, to go on his mission. And honestly, he's probably better off, in my opinion, he's better off with the boots he was wearing because yeah. we both know what brand new boots feel like. Not, you, you might as well be doing all that. Right. right. Not you might as well, they got to be broken in. <laughs> yeah, you might as well be walking with cinder blocks on your feet because yep. them shit's going to hurt. So, anyway, he goes, he, he snatches a bunch of guns and whatnot, put them in a the cart. And Ray Don Chong's supposed to be taking him out. And that's why I said, like, she got the rocket launcher and the instructions and everything. As soon as she leaves the store, uh, the cops come in. And, you know, they they arrest uh, Arnold, put him in the back of the... Don't uh, even think about it. Like, you right. got a freaking two shotguns on him. Like you right, yeah, yeah. No, he's going to do something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what are you talking about? Um, <laughs> so at this, at this point, this is when my wife is... This is when my wife says stuff like, so where did she go? Because she literally mm. just walked away from him when the police, like, she's like, police didn't see her right. with a cart full of weapons and a big yeah, ass where, cat. Where, 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 right? Yeah. Where were they parked at? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, and so this little this little woman, first of all, that cart had to be a few hundred pounds. Yeah, full yeah of all shit. that stuff in it. Yeah, I noticed right. that. Yeah. She <laughs> took that cart. She took that cart over curbs and broken glass and. Uh, a broken Busted wall bars, from a bulldozer. Right. Concrete. Yep. She got that cart out of there before the police showed up. In the two seconds before the police got there to arrest Arnold. Because they show her like she's looking, but they don't show where she's at actually. Right. Um, right. She got all that shit out of the cart and put it in the car fast enough to catch up to where Arnold was in the, in the old paddy wagon and shoot a rocket First of all, I love this movie. God, I love this movie. But your idea is, and she shot it backwards. So anyway, yeah. she was, it's like your intention is to commit capital murder because you're yeah. going to shoot a rocket at the police. Right. What What was your plan? Like your plan was to kill Arnold and kill the officers. Yeah, now, that would have been an interesting ending. The whole right. damn freaking paddy wagon just 
Wow. Okay. Credits. Right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. You go save yeah. her now. Yeah. Right. That was the <laughs> stupidest. I, oh my goodness. But anyway, as as plot armor would have it, <laughs> the rocket goes like under the under the the, 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 the paddy wagon and blows it up and right. flips it over. It flips. And, yeah. <laughs> right. Somehow, indestructible Ar- uh, uh, Arnold is he's fine. He's fine. He <laughs> hops out. He hops out of the car. And, you know, they, <laughs> yeah, <that>. yeah. <laughs> I read the instructions. <laughs> Did you like? Where did you learn how to do that? I read the instructions. <laughs> oh the, man. The the instructions said point at police officers. Like that where anyway. Yeah. I feel like she could have come up with something else. A grenade would have been a better idea. Even that still wouldn't have been yeah. good. I'm just saying. Yeah, right at the light. Something like that would be cool. Right. They, she already had their attention, you know. That leads into the them uh going to the uh the dock. And right, find the plane. The, uh, plane at. Mm-hmm. They kind of sneak out there to get the plane, get on the plane, and they're kind of talking, and they get uh, seen by some guards. And right. these guards are like they work for Arius, so they're like in camouflage and whatnot. They're like soldiers, and mm-hmm. these guys are driving down like the the, the dock in one of those old school jeeps, military jeeps. And the longest me, pier was, I've ever seen. Right, I was just about to say. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Bro, this pier is like an airfield, or or like, I'm because I was saying like, yo, how long are these dudes gonna be driving and shooting and shooting? And they didn't never, and and they didn't stop. You know what I'm saying? Like they were still driving. And Arnold is trying to start the plane, right? Right. She's like, oh my god, it's so old. It's older than me. You're gonna start this shit, and and (laughs) you know what's crazy? I'm gonna skip something real quick. It was crazy. Arnold ends up starting. He punches the, the the dashboard or whatever, and the plane yeah. starts. And then he when she's trying to pull up, right? <laughs> when, when she's Pope. trying to pull up, when, she, when she's trying to pull up over those boats, like he 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 gives it a little more juice. And my wife immediately said, "Well, why is he flying the damn plane? Because she don't know what she's doing." Yeah. But anyway, Arnold. No one in this movie shoots properly. God, so trash. Eighties <laughs> movies. Eighties movies logic. All the way, everyone shoots from the hip. Yeah. Apparently, <laughs> apparently, that's the most accurate way to shoot in the eighties. I don't know. Um, it doesn't matter what they're shooting; it's from the hip. So the guys are in the jeep. Now these dudes got to be like a couple hundred yards away. They're using fully automatic weapons, shooting at the plane. Ain't nobody hitting Arnold. Ain't nobody. Ain't no. Ain't nothing hitting the plane that I could tell, or maybe it was. Nothing. They're toward but, the end when they got closer to, to the plane. Right, yeah. From the beginning, they weren't in the squat. Right. Yeah. Arnold's got like a Uzi. First of all, if you understand how these things work, you they aren't accurate to begin with. No. No. Not if Uzi, you're shooting, no. you know, a hundred yards away, it's definitely not them shit that shit spraying everywhere. Yeah, you're killing right. everybody else. Right. <laughs> He somehow hits these guys, and the jeep falls into the water, and that's when they they get away. Yeah, once again, you build up that mystique that like, yeah, he's he's untouchable. Yeah, yeah. Right. bullets just kind of fly that's around. Right. But then we know we get the um, them getting flying to the island, Valverde or whatever it's called, and Arnold tells uh, Cindy Ray Don Chong, "Hey, look, you know." Right. This is the call. I need you to call Franklin Kirby on the radio. Keep going, kids. Keep doing it until you get someone. And got a response, right? Right, and that gives her a reason to not go onto the island with him, so he can kind of go solo, one man army. Which I don't know. Like, you can look at it like she had a role in the movie, and then she kind of gets ignored in the very last part in the climax. Um, or right. it just didn't. Or if you think about it, it kind of doesn't make sense for her to go help. Like, she can't do none of this shit. You know what I'm saying? No, Even though she no, did save his life. Ended up getting smoked. Yeah, she would have right. getting smoked. Immediately. You know? um, <laughs> <laughs> right. right. So I would like us both to talk about this action scene that's coming up. First, let me just mention one of the coolest things in this movie is, and the most iconic is the scene of him putting on all his uh, battle, his battle dress. All right. Right. You know, first, you know, he gets on the little uh, uh 
inflatable raft. And did they have an inflatable raft? Is that one of the things he got out of the store? I don't even remember. I I think so, but you didn't it see it, but been. it probably right. was because he grabbed fins and stuff. So I figured maybe he yeah. probably had one of those as well. Yeah, because so, yeah. they knew they were going to an island. So, yeah, I, all right. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll let that one slide. Um, <laughs> but, you know, he's my, my wife was like, why is he paddling over there in his drawers? Like, she, she was saying that, well, why didn't he just put some pants? Like, what was the point? Because he had the flippers and this stuff that he had from the uh, surplus place. And, you know, I'm just, I'm just being, you know, an asshole. I'm like, no, 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 you know what I'm saying? He's, he's got to be more sleek and, you know, it's, he's got to be lighter when he's paddling. And, and I'm just making up dumbass excuses. But she's like, no. Nah. <laughs> she's like, she's like no, nah, no, nah, it don't make sense. Like, why is he in his drawers? It don't make sense. But anyway, he gets on the beach. The reason is show his physique. <laughs> right, yeah. pretty much. Pretty much right? <laughs> That's what I want to say. Like, they got to have a reason to show him, you know. Um, yeah. yeah, so he puts the cam on. He puts his battle dress on. His knife, grenades, boots. Them, them tight-ass, probably uncomfortable-ass brand-new boots that he's lacing up. You know, he puts the, he's got the, the iconic shot with him with the, the assault rifle and the uh, rocket launcher. Box locker and they were all yeah. the weapons. Yeah. yeah. Uh, smoke behind him, you know, and walking into the camera. Yeah. Like, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Right. Awesome ass scene. Yeah. This is when you get into the one man army portion of this movie uh, where he goes to this island. He does a one man assault on this island. Now, hundreds and thousands of soldiers. Right. Like, right. I don't understand. Yeah. And he's about to smoke all of them by yep. himself. Don't reload. Um, no, he, I see no reloading going right. on at all. <laughs> a lot of shooting. He gets, <laughs> right. He's got the binoculars. Like he's checking out the camp. You know what I'm saying? He's got his binos. He's checking out the camp. And if you look real close at those binoculars, just, all they did was take like some regular like binoculars and they glued like some shit to the top. You can see the glue. It's crazy. They you look at it hard cool. enough. Right. Yeah. Um, I use laser range finder uh, vinyls in the army because of the job I had. Right. And that wasn't enough. Yeah, that wasn't enough. <laughs> um, but you know, whatever. You know, people don't know that, so like, whatever. Right, um, right. Believable. <laughs> so, you know, you see him uh, planting like C4 and uh, claymores everywhere around the camp because he, he's he told Radon Chong, you know, wait for my signal and start calling the radio. Right. And she was like, "Well, what's the signal?" You know, he was like, "Well, oh, hell, all, all, all fucking hell is gonna break loose." <laughs> he yeah. wasn't moving one line either, right? <laughs> oh, no. um, so he's setting all that stuff up, man. And right when he spotted, he just, he just from the hip just starts smoking dudes. And as he's running away, full of millions of rounds. Yes, yes. <laughs> as he's running away, man, he hits the he hits the detonator. <laughs> Buildings go crazy. Blah blah blah. blah. Huge explosions. The explosions look great, actually. Um, yeah, they, they were. That's like probably the, where most of their budget went. <laughs> right. Yeah, the pyrotechnic work is is great. If you're looking though, you can see the dummies. Standing in front of the buildings, yeah, yeah, like this stationary, just standing there, and that's when all hell breaks loose. And you jump in any time, but you see him; he's just he's smoking dudes, made the smoking dudes. And you see like stuntmen. What's crazy, like the stuntmen in this movie, there were so many stunts that had to happen, and so many people that got killed. There's yeah. it's the same people get killed four or five times. You don't notice because you're not really paying attention to who's who. But like the same yeah. stunt people were dying <laughs> over and over again, just in different places. Right. Yeah. Yep. Doing um, flips and tumbles. And yeah. Getting getting yeah. frequent flyer miles with shotgun yep. shells. I mean, yep. you name it, it was going on. Grenades yep. blowing dudes up. They flipping in the air. Yep. Yeah. I you see the little, might, might, the little trampoline thing that they fly off of. Like yeah. The grenade goes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my my thing was in the beginning when he's using the range finder and all this stuff to to scope out that entire base that that the base was huge man because you had all those troops there yeah. you had your your personnel barracks and all of that stuff and you had your warehouses and so how, my thing is how the heck did he navigate so quickly to yeah. find where his daughter was because that would have been like 
finding a, a freaking needle in a haystack. Needle that place haystack. is huge. Yeah. Yep. But again, you know, he gets the hero's pass and he, he finds where uh, the, the main house where his daughter's at and where the, the, the president and, and Bennett is at. But yeah, it's just, you know, the carnage was just, I, I almost felt like, I mean, if, if Rambo hadn't come out first, I would have thought that they were trying to one up them because it, the carnage was ridiculous, man. I mean, you, right. you you figuring platoons and platoons of guys there, and these guys were just just taking an L. And like you said, no bullets went near him. And the thing that I think the advantage he had, you know, was the fact that he stayed mobile. He just kept moving. He kept yeah. moving, kept changing positions you know, shooting at angles, you know, double back and all that stuff like that, which, yeah. you know, it makes sense. But eventually, with all those guys, somebody will get a, le- a, a lucky shot and the credits yeah. are going to roll, man. And that did right. not happen here. Right, <laughs> right. So. Yep. And, and at this point, we already know, at this point, actually, Arias and Bennett know that Matrix wasn't on the plane because the plane right. pulls up and, and they pull the dude's corpse off and his, his lookout's Timing. call and like, Right, the time right. He, he, and perfect. he was timed on his watch, like how long I got to get there and everything, and it, it came out like right on time. When and they Jenny, found, when he found out, yeah, they like, killed yeah. her, and I mean, he's already yeah. there. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, and Jenny like pulled the doorknob off and uh, was using it to help her escape out of the back of that room. He does a pry to him, um, yeah. Right. So when Bennett's going to kill Jenny. He pulls the, the handle, the door knock comes off. He's like, oh, shit. He busts nah, in there. Right She's off. gone. God damn it. Right. <laughs> yeah. She's gone. He busts through the the, the the boarded up window that she went through. And right. he sees her go down in, like, the basement. So he follows her down there. So while all this carnage is going on, troops are running everywhere, different directions, which is crazy. Like, everybody should be going the same direction. There's people going like this, like, back. Like, where y'all going? Um, all over Bennett place, yeah. follows her. Right, he follows her down into the basement, and this is why all this other you know carnage is going on. And what I wanted to say earlier, the connection that this movie has to Beverly Hills Cop is this is Victor Maitland's house from Beverly Hills Cop, which is the Ooh. old um, uh, I forgot the name of the mansion. I is is leaving my head right now, but anyway, it's a famous mansion in Hollywood, and it's been used in uh, you know several movies. So that same year, wait, but year before, Beverly Hills Cop was 84. So the year before, the finale shootout of Beverly Hills Cop was shot at the same house. Mm. So if, you, if you're watching this movie, this is one of those things that I didn't know, like, you know, before internet was a thing and like IMDb and all that. Um, right. I only knew it was Victor Maitland's house because it looked just like Victor Maitland's house. And I used to say that like years ago. Like, that's the same house as Beverly Hills Cop. Like I finally got a chance to look it up. It is. It's, they use the same right. house. So when you when you're looking at like the grounds, he's running around. It's like you could substitute him for Axel Foley, and it's it's the same. It's the same setup. Um, right. So I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Same <laughs> same house. But anyway, and that house isn't on an island or anything. It's like in the middle of Hollywood. He's just like you said, smoking these dudes, man. And there was like a grenade that goes off that finally hurts him. He gets he catches he gets a little graze or whatever, and you see him he takes his thing. He's like he's like ah, ah you know, yeah. um, no no major damage of course, you know, nothing crazy, you know? right. no shrapnel, <laughs> a little shrapnel, shrapnel. It's, uh, right? <laughs> Some slight work, it's nothing. He goes inside that shed, he goes inside that shed, and the dudes surround the shed, man, and he's looking, and you see from the outside, and and they and guys like you know light it up. They like the yeah. shed the hell up. And you're like, look, I don't care if he laid flat or got on the ceiling. Somewhere. Right. Yeah. No, you did. There's a mother. Unless these dudes are only shooting at chest height, which they weren't, then like, no. you know, there's no way you're getting through this. So the one dude tells the other guy, like, you know, go check. He opens the door, catches the the Jason Voorhees pitchfork uh in the chest. Yep. <laughs> and uh, the other dude gets the uh, saw blade scout, which Jeez, I always, man, that, I that always thought that was the scene. Oh, man. I love it! Beautiful scene, man. I love it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> have his scout flying in, flying in the air, like, yep. If that isn't one of the most ridiculous kills in a movie, like, yeah, that, 
Like you basically, <laughs> he missed. He basically missed. Because where are you aiming with a saw blade? You're aiming at the dude's face or neck or something. You're not aiming at a scalp. So it's not he did that shit on purpose. Like you think about it, he yeah, missed. It. Yeah. <laughs> Took his whole yeah. top off. Half his freaking brain exposed. Like, yeah. Okay. That worked. The other guy just catches it in the neck. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And then he gets he has the axe that and, and this when I'm watching, like I know this part. I'm like, balls arm. Because yeah. he hits the one dude in the balls with an axe. Like uppercut to the balls with an axe. And then the right. other guy he cuts his arm off with a machete. Ha! Yeah. Everybody's watching their partners die. They're, you're watching your own troops die. Your own troop mates die like a mom. You said, right. oh my God. Yeah. Just watching yeah. them when you massive people, man. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm, <laughs> Nobody I'm next. Like, <laughs> grew up or nothing. They just, oh, yeah. Fucks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dudes out here getting dismembered, and you just watch it. <laughs> yeah, that arm part yeah. was like, he literally <laughs> held it and hacked it off. Like, nobody's trying to help this guy at all, man. Like, wow. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So he uh, in this, in the midst of this, you get scenes of like Bennett chasing uh, Jenny down in the Getting closer uh, and closer. Man, you know she's trying to hide from him and everything. So Arnold gets into the house, and there's uh, General Arius or whatever his, his name is. Right. They have a little shootout, and um, you know Arnold ends up smoking the dude really with a shotgun. Uh, yeah. Shoot some smoke him, out of a window. Smoke him reverse freaking Antonio Bandetti. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Al Pacino style. Instead of yeah, right, flying right, right. forward, he flew back with. <laughs> right. Yeah. Reverse. Right. Reverse Tony Montana. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So you know, right after that, you know, he's he's looking around. He's looking for Jenny. And this is one of those things where I'm like, okay, this is a little ridiculous. He has no idea where she is. Right. Like none. Right. Has no idea. And, right. And you and you can tell like the way the movie shot. So that scene in the basement was actually they had ran out of money at this point in the movie. Mm, because okay. the the ending scene was supposed to be like Bennett like kind of escapes on a boat and he chases him and this whole bunch of stuff was supposed to happen, right? But he ran out of mm-hmm. money. So the director, like where his kind of office was on the back lot. There was an actual, um, like, a area with a, a, a furnace, like a furnace okay. room area, or whatever. And being that it was on the lot, like they were able to use it for free. Okay. So that's why that's why they shot that whole scene down there. Like it's supposed to be the basement, but it's like these tunnels or whatever on the back lot. Oh and man. Okay. Okay. Yeah. They so they just used that as like the basement and the ending climax because like they could use that. They could shoot there for free. That was clutch. Um, that was clutch. Right. It, yeah. Definitely. And they said it actually turned out pretty good like that. You can tell like from the, the way the movie shot that like this isn't if you were in that basement and you yelled somebody's name, someone upstairs in the house ain't gonna hear you. No. Like that's just the way no. it looks, right? right? Right. But you hear Jenny, you hear Jenny saying, like, you know, yelling or or she screams, she does something. And Arnold Daddy. looks. Right. Arnold, Daddy. Arnold, Daddy. Yeah, he looks. And I'm like, I'm saying like really? you hear that shit, right? <laughs> right. Ain't no way you heard that shit. So anyway, he 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 goes down and apparently he knows she's down there. Now this is where this is where Jenny was dumped. She was hiding. She was hidden. All right. Right. Bennett didn't know where she was. So Arnold comes on there. He goes, Jenny, Jenny, knowing that she knows that Ben is looking for her. She right. stands up, Daddy. Like, oh, my wife was like, you dumbass. Yeah. So, gave her permission. That's, yep. Right. Bennett snatches her up. And, and <laughs> now, uh, here, here's Arnold. They, they all, there's a clash. They, you know, they, they finally meet, they see each other. Bennett yep. takes his, he's got Jenny. He takes a shot at Arnold, hits him in the arm. You know, yep. slight work. You know, all little, the advantage. Little, yeah. A little flesh wound, you know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yep. he, he, he slides over behind the wall. And, um, Ben Ben is basically like I'm gonna kill you, and Arnold Arnold <laughs> uses his own ego against him, which is a slick it's a slick move, Jedi mind trick exactly right yep. right he's like you know come <laughs> on Bennett put down that chicken shit gun 
put the knife in me. You know, you know, listen. You know, I got listen one to arm. Me. You can beat me. Right, right, <laughs> right. Bennett, dumbass, puts the gun down. He's like, I don't need no thinking gun. Gun, John. I can beat you. I don't need no gun. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need the girl. Yeah. 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 <laughs> gave him all the advantages. Yeah. Gave it away, man. Like, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you tell this dude was like a psycho. Like, I'm going to kill you now. He's a psycho. He's a complete psycho. And and you get this great action classic, scene. Classic Vernon Wells right there, man. Yeah. He plays the psycho real good. Real good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We get this great fight, 80s action fight scene. Of right. Two guys that, on a physical level, look completely mismatched. All right. Yeah. Yeah. That now, yeah. Now, now I will say this. You know, the size of a person doesn't matter nearly as much as the skill of their opponent. True. All right. True. Very true. If if Vernon Wells was some you know Brazilian jiu jitsu or you know champion boxer <laughs> or something like that, I'd give him the benefit of the doubt. Like he could probably kick Arnold's ass. You know. Right. He didn't display none of that shit. All right. No. He was just throwing blows. And you know, they had the knife. You know, they were they were, you know, having a knife fight and whatever, like they had a little skill. But this this fight, you know, Vernon Wells was kind of getting the upper hand. Arnold didn't only have one arm. Right. And it did you did get the sense that okay, like movie wise, these two dudes are maybe not necessarily on the same level, but Vernon Wells ain't much ain't for ain't far behind Arnold. Right, right. On a, on a skill standpoint, um, but anyway, I, I want to hear your thoughts on the on the actual fight scene. I thought that again, like and when I said in the beginning, I think that they try to use uh, Bennett's crazy to counter Arnold's, uh, I guess, skill, and the fact that Arnold had one one arm, you know, literally one arm was kind of banged up from the gunshot, so he had an advantage. Um, it was, I think, it was well choreographed. I think they could have did without the electrocution part because that kind of just lamed oh, everything out. But yeah. I don't know, man. Maybe that maybe that was shock therapy that gave him some extra <laughs> power. I don't know. I, that's that's what starts I said. Winning. <laughs> yeah. Starts winning out of nowhere. And I'm just like, wow, okay, yeah. we'll, we'll go with it. No problem. Uh, but the, the end result was pretty cool. I, I kind of liked when um, when Arnold threw the pipe and it, it pierced the – the tank behind him and little yeah. Steve Bennett, you know, and he got yeah. freaking steam coming out of the fight. That was cool. That was cool. Yeah. The end result was pretty yeah. decent, but yeah, yeah, I just think that they they weren't really like like you said, the balance really wasn't there. But I think that they were going for the crazy versus the 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 strength thing, and it kind of, yeah. and you know, he, he kind of had his moments where he looked like he had an advantage. And I mean, again, he, his footwork was all right, you know, but yeah, it was just. It, yeah. it wasn't matched compared to like this man that killed like million dudes coming down here to fight yeah. you. Like, come on, man, yeah. just lay down, dude. You're done. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fight is over. Yeah. Give up, man. <laughs> let me but let me tell you move. something. Yeah, let me tell you something, man. <laughs> it, it's one of those things just hard to appreciate. I um, yeah. I do I do a little boxing uh, training, right? So if when I'm at the, the boxing gym and the instructor's like, okay. We're doing whatever for three minutes and we're going to do three rounds a piece. Mm. You know, three rounds, three minutes. Bro, I am dying by that third minute. Arnold rode from a plane, not a short distance, to this island, got dressed, assault, ran over to wherever he was going. Wasn't a short distance because he showed it in the binoculars. Um, right, right. Set up everything he needed to set up, carrying a whole bunch of equipment, murked like 150 dudes, all right? <laughs> right. Hung, hung, on, hung on a ceiling like Batman, stabbed a dude with a pitchfork, like sliced a dude's scalp off with a freaking <laughs> saw blade, Yeah. and had a full-fledged fight with another human being. Mm-hmm. At this point, Vernon Wells had all the advantage, in my opinion. Right, you would think. Exactly. And and Arnold is so superhuman that he's able to take a broken pipe, throw it like a fucking javelin. <laughs> all right. Hard enough to go through a human body, a chest, 
bones and shit, yeah. the spine, and pierce into like a tank behind it. Uh, let off some steam, Bennett. Like, this is that 80s movie's ridiculousness that we love. <laughs> yeah. I Over freaking love it. It's so stupid. I love it. It's ridiculous to the point where <laughs> it's ridiculous to the point where you don't care that it's ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. Because it should have been like a meat plug inside that pipe. There shouldn't have been any steam coming out of it. Like, just, nah. You think about it. But, you know, the, the plug should have flew out first. Like, boop. And then like the steam. Whatever. But it, it's so ridiculous that you don't think about how ridiculous it is. <laughs> you just you're just right. there for the ride. I'm just there for the ride. You know, there's there's a contrast you can make between this movie and Predator. Arnold perfected his craft in like Predator. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's like Commando was, you know, his first real try at it. And it's it's really good and it's really entertaining. But it's just it's on that level of it's great for a different reason than Predator is great. Right. When it comes to movies that are objectively good versus movies that are just endlessly rewatchable. Those, those are two different things. Sometimes they can be the same. So you take a movie like Aliens. Aliens is objectively good and endlessly rewatchable. Right. Commando is cheesy 80s action. And if you break it down, it's not like a good, objectively good movie, but it's endlessly rewatchable because it's just a great time, which is right. That's, that's worth as much to me than, as anything else. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you want to see the hero win in, in incredible ways. And this is like satisfies all right. of that. Right. 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 Like is <laughs> you think about a movie like uh Rocky Four, right? Is Rocky Four the best Rocky movie? It objectively speaking, like, no. Is it my favorite? Yes. Right. It's the one I'll watch over and over again. That one in three. Yeah. I love three too, but yeah. yeah four three is my yes. favorite. Three. Yeah. This is this is one of those movies. So I just wanted to get your like, what are your what are your closing thoughts about Commander? Like 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 you said, I think that it's uh, it's you can definitely rewatch it a thousand times. I mean, it's kind of like modeled after that you know that one man army superhero that saves the day and gets his daughter back and 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 drives off into the sunset with the girl and and the kid and. Everybody lives happily ever after, <laughs> yeah. um, but it does it in like it's over the top. Like you, like you said, the carnage, the uh, like the the heroism is just like it's just so far away from reality where you can actually sit down and enjoy the ride, and it's just it's satisfying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and during that yeah. time period, that's what it was all about. You know, you had Chuck was doing his thing, Stallone was doing his thing, everybody had their a little action hero thing going on and it was it just it fit it fit the time it fit the yeah. time definitely yeah and it made it smart yeah. Yeah. yeah that's i mean yeah that's, that's really the way i feel about it man it's escapism at its best um, right escapism. It's, mm-hmm. yeah I, it's, I can put it on in the background or i can just sit down and watch it that's commando y'all if you've never seen this movie please 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 give it a watch uh if i remember you owe correctly, yourself I, you owe it, yeah. Matter of fact, it's, you, it's, you can watch it for life. free. Yeah, you can watch it for free on Tubi. Yep. Tubi. Tubi's free. Mm-hmm. All right. Pull it up. There's, there's no excuse. If you want, go watch another terrible movie on Tubi, too. I don't care, but you, you owe it to yourself to watch <laughs> Commando. Watch this one, exactly. Yeah. Commando. You owe it to yourself. There's only a few commercials. Just owe it to yourself. Um, this is a great movie. Great Schwarzenegger vehicle. It's, you know, one of his earlier movies. And this, right. this is the prototype for action. If you've never seen it, if you watch this movie, you'll realize why movies that came after this are the way that they are. This was a thing, exactly. Yeah, yeah. this was definitely a thing. So, man, like I said, Alex, I really appreciate <laughs> you helping me with this. Hey, uh, you anytime, know. stuff like this is, you know, this is this is our thing, man. Urge everybody to uh, to definitely. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, yeah. We're going to be back. Got the month of October. It's coming. Yeah, so we buddy. Got, we got, <laughs> yeah. We, we got the creepy crawlers coming. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stay tuned. Yeah, that's right. Stay tuned, and we'll see y'all soon. Peace.